Hello! This is Into the Forest I Go. My name is Tom. This is my wife, Mary, and today we are going to be talking a little bit about nutrition and a little bit about our history when it comes to food and how we developed certain habits, how we developed certain approach to food and nutrition in general. And we are over here in this beautiful scenery on a training camp in Czech Republic. So you might be hearing some noises around because my club mates are in a house right behind the camera. They will be leaving for a training session somewhere in between, which we skip because we are attending only the afternoon training session today. But all in all, let's focus on the topic at hand. Um, before we go into whatever we want to talk about, yes, I will give you the voice in a moment. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to mention that uh, if you want to support the channel, consider subscribing. Uh, you can also support us financially through Patreon and the link will be in the description of, the, on the, um, of this video. And also I want to thank very much for all the people that do support us, be it uh, through commenting, contacting me, liking the videos, um, or also through supporting us on the Patreon page. Thank you, for, thank you so much, thank you very much. And now let's talk about nutrition, and let's talk about food in sports in general. So I want to start, I guess, with this, that my wife um, has been um, into nutrition for many years now and she's the most educated person a person i know in this area so i think this is the right exactly the right person i want to talk about Thank you. and we have been or i have been um putting it off for a very long time but uh, since the beginning of this channel i always had in my head that someday we want to come to the nutrition part of sports and then we are going to sit together and talk so this is the day and we thought when uh, we were discussing uh, about how we want to approach this that we will start a little bit with the history of us starting somewhere um, many years ago in the orienteering world and how food or what was our connection with food back then how it evolved through the years, how it looks right uh, right now, how it looks like right now, and how it affected our performance, um, our uh, all kinds of traveling and stuff like that. So hopefully this will be interesting and informative at the same time. And we will make sure to drop some important remarks or, or guidances in terms of nutrition as well. Although in many of the topics, we will not go into a lot of details because um, then this video will be too long and we will just put um, some things aside and make room for them in some other videos that we will record in this topic in the future. Welcome, Mary. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. <laughs> okay, so I guess that I want to go back all the way to the past and try to remember our first training camps that we were attending and uh, I was trying to remember how how the food looked like back then how um, what we were eating during those training camps what, what are your memories of it oh I remember white bread <laughs> a lot of it cheese of course some ham mm, not not too much vegetables and fruits milk just normal stuff, I would say. Pasta. Yeah, I guess <laughs> at least, you know, normal stuff for <laughs> Polish people, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so my memories are, are a little bit similar. So we were eating, first of all, during training camps. You know, it, it has to be cheap yeah. and fast. They yeah, are yeah, two yeah. the most important things. Yes, so, <laughs> so I, I was going to say that during the training camps, we were mostly preparing food by ourselves right? Yeah. Especially breakfasts and suppers, so morning and, and evening meals. And I remember lots of sandwiches. I mean, we, <laughs> we were eating lots of sandwiches back then. And most of our food was outside of the dinner, so, so, so the meal in the middle of the day was connected to sandwich with something, right? And as you said, uh, it was never um, brown bread, so to say, so it was always white bread. Yes. Um, and uh, we were eating it with all kinds of things like ham, cheese, uh, some some meat pies, right? That spreads yeah. over over the bread. Uh, jam, lots of jam sometimes, right? Nutella. <laughs> yeah, Nutella, of course. Um, 
And um, I'm also thinking that we were eating quite a lot of instant noodles, right? Like from, from you know, from the package, mm -hmm. you just pour boiling water over it, wait mm -hmm. a few minutes and there you go. So we were eating quite a lot of this as well. Um, I also remember that our coach has a few fixation for the meat horse. <laughs> Sorry, horse meat. It's horse meat. So, so at every training camp, we had like a, pea, a, a big piece of, of the horse meat that he was bringing. And he, no, it he was, was just a joke. <laughs> yeah, and I, well, it wasn't a joke. It was there. No, it was just you, a joke. What, what do you mean just a joke? <laughs> It wasn't really from the horse. <laughs> you think so? Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> My God, I, was, I believed up until this moment that no. it was horse meat. I mean, no, it was a joke. But it, you sure? <laughs> yes. I didn't I'm know not that. sure you can even buy a horse meat. Of course before. you can. <laughs> of course you can, and that's why I believe that this was it because I've seen it in shops several times. No, I think it was a joke. All right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I was fooled. <laughs> I was fooled. Yeah, so so, so basically we were eating whatever was cheap and uh, whatever uh, we could save some money on. And that was our main approach. Nobody was thinking about how uh, rich in nutrition the food was, right? Oh. And we were just focusing, okay, let's get our bellies full. So that we have the energy to, as to, as to practice as, <laughs> as cheap as possible. Yeah, I think that was yeah. that, that was the approach. Um, but that was quite a long time ago. So that that was what like uh, oh, twenty years twenty ago. years ago. Yeah. That was like twenty years ago. So quite quite some time mm -hmm. ago. But since then things have changed, and and not only you know in our heads and in our approach to food, but also generally in in the society. I would say in a country in a market. So um, I think that... It, I think in Poland people are richer now and they can spend more money on food. Exactly. And, exactly. They can, and uh, the variety, variety in the shops, are it's... Um, it's a lot, lot more product <laughs> available, yes. right, yes. in the shops. Yeah. So you have more things to choose from. Exactly, this is where I was going to. So there are like two things that happened. Our thinking about food changed, but at the same time economy changed. Um, people got a little bit more wealthier and, uh, and and the availability of products went up so you had more things to choose from yeah absolutely so how do, do you remember the time when your approach or your thinking about food became a little bit more conscious that you were not like okay I'll eat whatever uh, whatever I feel like eating at this moment in time, but I will actually start thinking about what my body needs and therefore what I should eat to not only uh, perform well in sports, but also to be healthier in general. Yeah. To be honest, I uh, for a long time I never paid, at paid at any attention to what I'm eating. I mean, my mother was always at home, she wasn't working, so she was preparing all the food for the family. So, I, in fact, when I moved and lived with Tom, I have no idea how to cook. <laughs> so we we um, ate just uh, simple foods like uh, pasta with tomato sauce, uh, milk with cereals, <laughs> and uh, it was um, more now like twelve years ago when I when our daughter was born, and that was the first time I think that. Hmm, the nutrition is important. I have to think about it and uh, I need to learn something because when you have a child, you need to know what the child should eat, especially in the first year. It's like there's a um, different food that the child can eat in, in a... Yeah, so like, uh, you're like gradually introducing yes. new food to, to a young baby. Yes, and that, that's the first time you think uh, that it really matters yeah. what, what I eat. And uh, later on, when she was like uh, a year, year old, and she started a nursery, nursery house? Nursery school, yeah. Nursery school. Uh, she was always uh, ill, like almost all the time. Running nose. Coughing, right? Some, yes. Um, some inflammation in her lungs. Yes. Uh, so it was like 
two weeks in the nursery nursery school and then one month at ho- month at home. Yeah, and I, I remember. <laughs> I, I don't remember it like this. I remember that like during the month she was like three or four days at the nursery school <laughs> and, and the rest was at home. That's what I remember at least. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> yes, and uh, what's uh, what's strange for me now. Not even one doctor uh, talked to, about with us about uh, nutrition. Yeah, that's, they, they, that's true. They just uh, give us uh, time prescriptions for medications, and that's all. I was working at the bank at the time. We we, we uh, both were working yeah. at the bank, and uh, it was just a coincidence that uh, they invited a dietitian to a meeting. A, like a lecture. Like right? a lecture, yes, and. This lecture changed something in my mind. Like it was the moment I feel okay. This is maybe this is the piece we are uh, missing. Maybe this is something we should put more attention to. That nut- this nutrition will change something in uh, her body, her immune system. And I started reading books about this, and then we changed a lot. It was like after one or two books, uh, we stopped eating meat at all. We skipped uh, all the dairy, eggs, and uh, I um, switched the whole f- our whole family to a vegan diet. Yeah, well, let me stop you that, there because I, I want to add a few things. So first of all, regarding the doctors, I remember that our daughter was, uh, w- when she was getting sick, she was, uh, very often her symptoms of getting sick was First, she was getting running nose, then she was starting to cough, and then we were getting to um, to the doctor. The doctor was, you know, listening to her breath, putting the stethoscope here and there, and very often the uh, diagnosis was. Now I don't know if I will know the good English word for it, but it was um, basically the inflammation of not lungs but something close to lungs. First it was something, uh, they said it was uh, viruses. Yeah, yeah, but, th- but then, you know. But then it changed to the, into the bacterial um, yes. disease. And, but anyway, very often when we were getting to the doctor, the doctor was saying basically that she needs to take an antibiotic yes. for, for some, some few, few weeks, right, <laughs> after this. And as young parents, you basically don't want to discuss with with the doctor because it seems like the doctor is the person that is always right so we were just putting her on the antibiotics and it was like every few months she was taking the antibiotics and and then a situation i think that changed it for me in my head a little bit was when we were planning to go to sweden for like two weeks i think or something like this and like just uh, two or three days or even, yeah, I think I think it was about two days uh, before uh, we were supposed to go. She got those symptoms again, and we went to the doctor again. And and the, the the lady doctor said that, well, it's the same thing again, and she basically has to go to the hospital. And I'm like, yeah. for the third time, I think. Yeah, yeah, it was it wasn't the first time. So so she was supposed to go to the hospital again to be hosp- hospitalized. And I remember asking you to find other doctors <laughs> yes because in my head i was like there's no way i'm missing going to sweden <laughs> screw that and in my, I mean, in my head it was no way i'm giving her uh, another antibiotic yes another antibiotic yeah. so <laughs> yeah so i think th- th- this was the moment that changed it a little bit for us so we thought okay maybe there is something wrong with our doctor so let's consult someone else and i've searched a little bit uh, online for a doctor we could go to privately and uh, we asked the lady to visit us at our at our home. She came, she and, and we didn't say anything about that. We went to another doctor and she, she said that uh, our daughter has to go to the hospital. So we didn't want to share any information before she actually took a look uh, at uh, our daughter and made her own mind, so to say. So we didn't say anything. A new doctor came, visited uh, um, us at our home. She examined Hannah and she basically said, well, She's probably fine. Her body is 
strong enough and she's old enough to fight this kind of an uh, inflammation or disease by herself and we should give her time to um, to battle it her body to battle it and then see what happens and we're like okay but we are you know going to sweden for in two days and we will be there for two weeks so should we take any precautions or anything and all she said that it was that you know if if it if, if the disease will be progressing and it will be getting worse then she will give us a prescription for an antibiotic i think um and we had this for, uh, device for inhaling it right through 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 the air i don't i'm not sure what's the good english word for it uh, but uh, we had the device and we said we can take it with us and you know buy, have the have the prescription for antibiotics and buy it if necessary and then give it to hannah but she said she also said that if she will be like if she won't be getting worse we should just let her fight the disease and and this changed a lot in my mind and it, it also I, I think it also connected with me very strongly because that that's what i feel like you, our bodies should be able to fight the diseases by themselves and most of the diseases our bodies if well taken care of well nutrition well uh, exercised they are strong enough to battle everything right so so we did exactly what she said we went to sweden i think like two days later our daughter was fine <laughs> all the <laughs> symptoms were gone and she was absolutely okay and we were thinking oh my god instead of being here we could have been in the hospital which is not a lot of fun at least in poland i don't know how it is in other countries but it, it never was a lot of fun yes, uh, but it was i i don't remember exactly but it was like one year after we changed the diet it wasn't just immediately after it it was sometimes later yeah one or two even years so she was stronger at that time yeah for sure. yeah yeah probably but um, don't uh, get us wrong the antibiotics are sometimes uh, Mm, unavailable unavailable no uh, unavoidable unavoidable yes they they can save lives but uh, in small children they are um, sometimes used um, too quickly without without really needed and they are um, very harmful for the uh, microbiome and uh, the immune system yeah yeah so what i remember from that moment in time is that since then which was already quite a long time ago i think our daughter hasn't taken any antibiotics am i right or no no there, something? There, there was at least one. for like five five years or something she didn't take um, any antibiotics there was one history when she was in a hospital again but we weren't sure what what's wrong with her uh, with her right now. But it was something connected, pr uh, probably with the kidneys. Oh yeah, yeah. So it was a different kind of disease. But you know the uh, respiratory um, diseases. I think from that moment yes. in time, we just let her fight it by herself. And it, you know, sometimes she was going with run with a running nose for several weeks and coughing a little bit for several weeks. But in general. She was fine, just like we were. You know, we also get these um, colds or Ill illnesses from time to time, and we just let it go and to let our bodies take care of it. All right. Anyway, let's go back to nutrition. So you were saying that um, there was this moment in time when you became a little bit more aware of how important food is, and we changed a little bit. Well, quite a lot actually in our diet. So we went from like a standard diet with eating everything to vegan diet. So quite an extreme change. Why do you think this change was important? And uh, why did you decide to make this step? What convinced you? I read a lot of books and uh, they convinced me. I think that uh, I really uh, was looking for something that would help us. I believed it uh, so much that it will help that I go into it like 100%. I started to learn not only about nutrition, but how to cook all these things, <laughs> which was everything was new to me. And then I realized uh, that we weren't eating the whole group of products we were missing from our diet. Uh, of course, vegetables, we were eating vegetables, but not as many as we needed. And the same with fruits, but uh, legumes and beans, 
that the whole uh, wonderful group of products that we were uh, not eating for many years, or maybe occasionally one or two times a, a year. And beans are really important for our health. Uh, so beans is the first group and the second gr group is uh, nuts and seeds. So like sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, um, flax seeds. And that's uh, next uh, really important group, fu group fu of food full of nutrition. Very important even by, uh, for the immune system. Yeah, I, I remember that before we made a switch or, or actually after we made a switch, I learned about some products that currently are a big part of our yes. diet and i've never even heard of them before <laughs> like yes. flax seeds yeah. it was i didn't know it existed you know chickpeas for example never you know never tried it even and now we are eating it every day sometimes like flax seeds almost every day chickpeas probably every week at least yes you, know? you, you would think that after skipping a lot of products like meat and dairy and eggs uh, you will have to eat always the same food and yeah. you have not really much left yeah so like <laughs> if i don't eat this then what else is left you know yes. that, that's that's the thinking but of the, many the people true is, the true is uh, you discovered so many new foods that's just wonderful <laughs> yeah yeah so i remember that Barry made a switch a little bit earlier and I was a little bit hesitant. So I was, eh, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Um, but uh, at the same time, I didn't read the books that she mm -hmm. read. So it came to me a little bit later and I, and I did uh, lecture myself a little bit in this area of, uh, as well. Uh, but um, I think I made a switch like half a year later. I was like... like the, um, maybe it was a switch in your mind, but at home uh, I was cooking the same for everyone. So it's not like I was cooking something different for me and something different like with meat for Tom. I yeah. said to him that if he, if he wants to eat meat, he can buy it and cook it for himself. <laughs> Which obviously I didn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so in fact, at home you were eating vegan from... Yeah, from just when we were visiting yeah. our parents, for example, or going somewhere outside, <laughs> I, I was still eating um, meat if available. But then, yeah, after half a year, I think I, I, I decided that I'm going to stop eating meat. Um, yeah, I, I even remember the book that changed it for me. It was Dr. Gregor's book, right? Um, uh, but at the same time, I did some online research and I've discovered that red meat, for example, is treated as, uh, a, 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 as food that is probably causing cancer. So that was also like a signal to me that, okay, if there is a controversy around this and uh, some people at least believe that meat can be cancerous that maybe there is something to it and you know if at that point in time i already had like the uh, the perspective of how the diet can look like without meat and i knew already that it's not boring that it's still tasty and it's all good and uh, and i think that that's that's what made the switch for me a little bit easier yes i think so we... thanks to you <laughs> and you're cooking at home yes i think we eat better now than 20 years ago <laughs> well yeah absolutely how did it how the change affected how do you feel like it, it affected your performance in sports because you know this is essentially mm -hmm. a channel for athletes so many people will be wondering okay meat is very often um, very often described as a very important part of the whole nutrition plan because it contains um, iron. <laughs> it contains iron. It contains <laughs> a lot of protein, right? So how how do you replace that? And if you stop eating meat, uh, how where will your body take these important elements? So how how was it in your case? Mm, I think the main change in my uh, feeling was the immune system so uh, i i just feel healthy like all the time i'm almost never uh, ill like running nose or something it's i just i can forget it, it exists almost but uh, when you think about dieting and nutrition you always you um, um, a lot of people will think about uh, the body weight so i was never over overweight 
and uh, in this area nothing will change but um, <clears throat> Of course, you have to plan your... Uh... <laughs> A very pretty bird game. <laughs> <laughs> you have to plan um, what? If you, are, if, you are, if you are going vegan, you have to plan your food uh, and your uh, diet more carefully. Uh -huh. Not to miss anything. So it's always good to learn some books or consult a dietitian. But to be honest, when you are eating uh, meat, you should do the same things. It's not like meat is uh, some magical food that you can eat it and you don't have to worry about anything else. So uh, in, in vegan, it's, it's uh, important to eat uh, legumes and beans. That's the main uh, source of protein and iron and also fiber. So uh, without beans, uh, it's really hard to, to balance this kind of diet. Do you feel that it affected your sport results in any way? Mm, I think it's hard to say. It's hard to compare. I, I don't know how I would feel now if I would eat meat or not, eat normally. But uh, what I can say is that um, I'm 10 years older now than when we started this diet and I still feel very good. Yeah, I remember for myself that similarly to you so I, I I never was overweight so it didn't affect my weight um, it I, I also never was very sickly so I didn't like uh, I, I was still quite healthy most of the time uh, so no big change over there but at that point in time I was still doing uh, the and uh, the, the blood tests every half a year right and I remember that after skipping meat and going to the vegan diet, my, um, what is it called, the, the, the red cells in my blood, hemoglobin, yes. right? Hemoglobin spiked up. So it was usually like in a mid-range of, of what's considered normal. And then after we changed our diet, it went to the top of the range almost. And I did hear the same thing happening for other people that put away meat for some time as well. So I think I'm not the only person that noticed this. And this might be important because the number of red cells affect how effectively the oxygen is transported in the body, right? So theoretically, it should have some, not a big, but some impact to uh, on your uh, performance or on how fast you are able to go and for, for how long you're able to go, I guess, right? Yes. We had quite a journey, right? And um, going from standard diet to vegan diet, I think now our diet is more vegetarian rather than vegan, right? Yes. So why did we take this step back and started eating dairy products, eggs again? I think mainly because it's easier, especially when you are not at home. At home, you can cook almost everything vegan. And uh, I have all the ingredients, so it's easy. But when we are traveling or on the competitions, it's hard to find vegan meals. And if, if even there are some vegan options, that are, they are not nutrition enough. Yeah, so Czech Republic is not that great <laughs> for vegan. Yeah. For all the Czech people watching. And it can be, it can be really stressful. So sometimes you can choose between eating something that's not vegan, but without any stress, without looking for it, just enjoying it. <laughs> uh, because if you want to stick to, to really all the rules, you have to be really careful, plan everything, and it can be stressful. And stress is not good for us, for us at all, overall. Yeah. So I think that's, that's one reason. And the second reason is uh, our daughter. And because she's not, she do, she doesn't want to eat everything that we are cooking at home. She has she has uh, some preferences and preferences. Preferences. She's now twelve years old, so she uh, she's aware that we are eating different than other people. She knows all the other dishes and just 
likes them and is, uh, she's asking for eggs, for... Um, yogurts? Yogurts, yes. And uh, I, I uh, don't want to uh, decide for her, for her like uh, everything. There are some standards that I'm trying to keep, like no meat at home, no drinks with sugar, uh, a lot of vegetables, uh, a lot of fruits, uh, beans, but uh, uh, I think she will decide for, for herself what she wants to eat uh, later in life. And uh, I, also, uh, I also want to uh, show her that uh, some, some, some of the food they can, uh, you, for example, you can eat eggs in a healthier, healthier way. So you can connect it with vegetables, for example, mm -hmm. or with whole grain bread. Okay. So the last thing I want to ask of you today is if you were to give some pointers to people that are thinking, okay, maybe my diet is not great. Maybe my diet is not perfect. Maybe I should make a change. What are the easiest things to change that will have the biggest impact? Mm -hmm. First of all, eat a lot of uh, vegetables, like half of the food that you are eating, half of the plate, there should be vegetables and fruits in every meal. And especially green leaves, but all uh, other vegetables are also very, very good. Okay, so let, let me ask some questions that I knew I had problems with at that point, uh, somewhere at the beginning when you know eating vegetables what does it exactly mean because for me almost everything apart meat is a vegetable so potatoes does it count as, as vegetables no, not really <laughs> buckwheat or a, a, any kind of um, um, no grains uh, grains right no grains lentils no beans no so these are not vegetables <laughs> although they seem like they are <laughs> so by vegetables Carrot, tomatoes, cucumbers, uh, radishes, kale, lettuce. Yeah, cabbage. Yeah. Stuff like that. So I'm doing it for you guys. <laughs> so that you don't make the same mistake like potatoes, vegetables. <laughs> yes. In fact, potato is a vegetable, but it's not very nutrition dense. Yeah. So I put it in the grain category. So you can eat potato or pasta or, or bread. It's, it's this level of nutrition. Yeah. So I started thinking about these like uh, um, high density energy fillers of meals that we eat, right? So we have like the vegetable part, which is all about vitamins and microminerals. Yes. And then there is grains, lentils, beans. Uh, potatoes, <laughs> which is like uh, the energy part. They are supposed to give us calories. Yes, they have more calories, but they, ha uh, they also have more proteins. Proteins, yes, yeah. as well. And of course, other things as well, uh, because in general, if you choose different types of grain, you will also be getting different micro elements into your diet anyway, right? Yes, so that's the second important thing, the divers, diversity. 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 So try to choose different things, not only bananas and apples, <laughs> but uh, also strawberries, oranges, like as many different foods as, foods as possible. Uh, and the same is with grains, so not only uh, bread or pasta, but buckwheat, oatmeal, millet. Mm. Quinoa. Qu Noah, yeah. <laughs> I know some. <laughs> so it's, it's very important. And as I said at the beginning, beans and lentils are very good group of products. So even if you are eating meat, you can uh, add the uh, beans and lentils to your salad, your soup, or even like a, a hummus. Right. And start eating this. And uh, the same with nuts and seeds. Okay. Anything else you want to add as a response to the question? Changing is easy changes that can be made. You can also uh, look look about how processed is this food. So it is if it is less processed, you can find it in nature. That that's better. So 
like vegetables and fruits. You can eat an apple of, or drink an apple juice. Yeah. So apple juice is more processed. It's uh, worse for your body. It has a, a lot uh, <clears throat> it, more sugar, less fiber. So it's always better to eat food in this natural form. Of course, you can cook it at home. <laughs> it's also okay. Yeah, and I think one more important thing that was quite big and at the same time quite easy for me is to put away all the non whole grain stuff yes. right so rice pasta bread these kind of things you can buy them in, in a whole grain state or a more processed uh, state uh, which is called like white bread white rice white pasta uh, and the difference in the uh, in, in the micro elements that are contained inside is quite significant. So, you know, it's just a very easy switch in terms of taste. It's almost no difference. And yeah, I mean, there is a difference in taste, but it's just like a pref individual, individual preference. You can get used to it. And it's not, not like the, the whole grain, um, whole grain alternatives taste worse. I think they, they actually taste better. So, so that's another thing I wanted to add here. Yeah, that's a very good move. <laughs> and eat less, less of grains and more of vegetables. Yeah. So if you are eating just a tomato at, uh, at the sandwich, it's not enough. You should eat more, more vegetables. All right. So I think we'll cut it here, this, this part. I want you to let us know which part of nutrition is interesting to you or is important to you and which part would you like us to go a little bit deeper into. So if you have even specific questions, let us know in the comments. Um, Mary is working with lots of people individually and consulting on lots of different diets. So she probably has answers to all of your questions and we will be happy to share them. So just point us in the right direction so that we know where to go with the next video in this topic that we will be recording somewhere in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you. I love the wife. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys, for watching as well. Subscribe, like, comment, all these kind of things. And I'll be seeing you in one of the next videos. Cheers.